In Climate Watch, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration released its yearly forecast on the Gulf of Mexico's hypoxic zone. This year, scientists predict the annual phenomenon, also called the dead zone, a little more ominous because it holds too little oxygen to support marine life. Well, it's going to be very, very large, maybe even record breaking this year. So joining me now to talk about the dead zone and its effect on wildlife is Professor of Marine Science at the University of Maryland, Donald Bosch. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Thank you, Anne-Marie. So Good to be here. when we first, uh, you know, reported on this yesterday and I heard that it was caused by uh, fertilizer runoff, I thought to myself, well, fertilizer, that makes things grow. Now I have a better understanding. It's making the wrong things grow. That's right. It makes the plants, the crops we rely on grow, but also if, it, if there's too much of it, runs off down the river to the Gulf of Mexico and it makes the makes algae grow to excess. It's not taking up and it fall, falls down toward the bottom. It, it decomposes and depletes the oxygen. Because as it's decomposing, it's using up oxygen? That's right, that's right. Okay. So, so, that, so the microorganisms that decompose the organic matter produced by this tremendous production in the Gulf uh, then uh, consumes oxygen and therefore uh, it depletes the oxygen in the bottom waters. Bottom waters are isolated from the surface waters here because of the density difference. The waters on the surface are fresher and, and warmer, and the waters on the bottom are saltier and cooler. So then you have this sort of dead zone, and it, it's basically these, the fertilizer and the algae, it's, it's essentially attacking the ecosystem at the very sort of basic level. So everything above that is, is affected from, um, from uh, fish to plants and, and so on and so forth. Why is it so large this year, though? Almost the size of New Hampshire. Well, it's very large this year, well, very likely to be very large this year because of the tremendous amount of runoff that we've had this year because of the floods. It seems to be a very you know, long-lasting flood condition in the Mississippi River Basin, but also uh, because of the, that those waters carry excess fertilizer, excess nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, which are washed off the fields, come down the rivers uh, and enter the Gulf. So, you know, we've been talking a lot about the flooding and part of it has to do with the area of the country that is flooding. We're talking about a lot of agricultural land, right? That's right. So the, the fact that the agricultural lands are flooded in the upper Mississippi Basin, in the Missouri River Basin, the Arkansas River Basin in particular, uh, actually br bring more uh, of this of the nitrogen and phosphorus than would if in a, in a normal year. So this is a cyclical thing, and there is a bit of a break in the winter time because we're not dealing with spring runoff. But it happens every single year. Is there anything that can be done to prevent it? Well, there is. Uh, the, the answer is to reduce the amount of excess fertilizer that runs off the land, and we can do that by improved practices and by targeting our efforts. In fact, the states of the Mississippi Basin and the EPA agreed 18 years ago to take action to shrink the size on the on the average of the dead zone in the Gulf by about two thirds. Now that is uh, a big task, but unfortunately we really haven't made much progress. So now 18 years later, the amount of the most consequential form of nitrogen uh, is not been reduced if you adjust for flow and we really haven't made much progress. That's largely because we have intensified agriculture and expanded it. We've expanded agriculture in the Mississippi Basin, particularly to grow corn to produce ethanol rather than food. Right, and I wonder if you have sort of two competing groups, you know, those that are interested in the ecology of the ocean versus the agricultural industry uh, that, you know, has its ups and downs and is certainly a significant part of the economy here. So we want to make sure that it stays healthy. Are they sort of competing when, uh, you know, they go knocking on lawmakers' doors? Well, they can be, and yeah. that's part of the problem, but we need to harmonize that. We need to find ways to produce our food in a more environmentally sensitive way. We can do that uh, if we understand that we can't maximize production of everything. And, uh, and also we can rebuild the filters within the Mississippi River Basin, open up the wetlands and the swamps to flooding, which remove some of those nutrients, uh, as well as manage the lower river in a way that recreates, helps build the delta, but also helps remove some of those nutrients before they enter the Gulf. So there are solutions there. They're just difficult ones, and they're sometimes costly ones.
Right. Uh, all really interesting stuff. Uh, Professor Bosch, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you.